Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some Crack Duck, more Warhammer 40k lore. I really liked his video on Cadia, and now he's, he has a video on my favorite boys, the Salamanders. The perfect Space Marine. Facts! Straight up facts. They are the best, they are perfect, they are number one. I stand by that, and I forever will stand by that. But... Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. Would love to join the Discord. Follow me over at Twitch. Please do go check out the two gaming channels here on YouTube. One is for edited content, and then the other is full stream VODs. Blah, blah, blee, blah. All that said, under a minute, let's dive into the video. Quack, quack, quack. Hi, friends. Wait, friends? What a coincidence I should mention, friends, because today we're talking about the Salamanders. The Salamanders are my favorite Space Marine chapter. Yeah! Yep. Mine too. Everything I like. It's no secret that I like green, and no matter how dumb this might seem, I, I actually like the nicer characters in 40k, so... Same. Same. Like, I think what the Salamanders benefit from, and why they actually work so well, and why it's so easy to like them... I mean, it's always super easy to like the characters that show kindness and empathy towards their fellow humans... But I think why in particular it works so well for salamanders, the salamanders, is that they are the kind people, the kind humans in, in a universe that is exceptionally cruel and brutal, and yet they manage to still maintain their heart and their empathy. Now, of course, are they still very much like hardcore tough take no shit at times yes right but like that helps them right it, it it makes them it makes them work even more i feel like within the world um it makes them feel like they have more depth of character to me um more so than really any of the other space marine factions um because right like they still are very much empire and i think dislike the xenos um but they will go out of their way to make sure humans survive because like the imperium cannot survive with the people that make up the imperium so like the salamanders are going to protect those people right yeah like, anyways. Salamanders really hit the spot. They're green, not too mean, and they love flamethrowers. Yeah. So, let's just jump right into it just like a salamander would. The salamanders were the 18th legion of the first founding. Before being reunited with their Primarch Vulcan, the salamanders were known as the Dragon Warriors. And they were... Oh, that's such a good name. This is why they're also number one. They were called the Dragon Warriors. Bro, they had dragon in their name. They, honestly... That's really enough to make them number one in my eyes. <laughs> Masters of the ancient art of Kung Fu. That last part was a joke, but honestly, Kung Fu Marines would actually be pretty funny. But yes, they were the dragon warriors, and even from the start, they had a penchant for sacrificing themselves in order to protect mankind. When the dragon warriors finally met their daddy Vulcan, he commended their selflessness in protecting the Imperial citizens against a massive orc horde. Vulcan even knelt to his legion in respect of their heroics in the face of doom. The legion was renamed after the giant salamanders of Vulcan's home world of Nocturne. During the heresy, the salamanders completed a number of seemingly impossible missions, often taking huge casualties in the process. They prioritized protecting humanity above all else, sometimes at the cost of efficiency and often at the cost of their lives. They preferred last stands over lasting long. That, that sounded weird. I meant... Hey, yo... Uh, and lasting long as in living. But regardless, this affinity for last stands meant that the Salamander Legion was one of the smallest legions of the heresy since they often took heavy losses in their campaign. Most notably in their first ever mission, the Unification Wars, the Isfan Drop Site Massacre, and of course, in the aforementioned battle where they first met Vulcan. After the heresy sent Salamanders got Salamander destroyed so hard, they weren't able to make many successor okay. chapters. In fact, it was widely believed that the Salamanders didn't have any successor chapters at all until the Ultima founding and the introduction of everybody's favorite marines, the Primaris. Although they've long been said to have no successor chapters prior to the Ultima founding, it has long been rumored and recently confirmed that there were in fact some successor chapters for the Salamanders. But, let's be honest, was it really a question that something like the Black Dragons was a successor chapter to the Salamanders? They used similar tactics and they're dragon-themed. Like, last- 
It's so fucking cool, dude. <laughs> I check something like the Space Wolves weren't dragon themed. They're getting overhated themed. Also, black skin, black armor. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> but after the Ultimate Foundry, they did get some new friends, such as the Dragon Spears, the Iron Drakes, and my personal favorite of the bunch, the Dark Krakens. And funnily enough, the Dark Krakens and the Dragon Spears are actually most notable for their aquatic operations. The Krakens hailing from an ocean boys. world where they fight giant sea monsters, and the Dragon Spears known for fighting alongside the Space Wolves in a reefside battle. These two successor chapters show that the Administratum obviously doesn't play Pokemon. Is what you would say if you were a fool. True Pokemon Masters know that the Salamanders will be Fire Dragon type, which means they'd be neutral to water. Is what you would say if you were a fool, because real true Pokemon Masters know that the Salamander Pokemon is a Charizard line, and they got stuck with Fire Flying for whatever reasons, and would still be weak to water. So, plot twist, the original statement was right, and the Administratum probably hasn't played the ancient simulation of Pokemon. Also, nobody bring up Salamence. The Charmander line is much closer to the Salamanders, so I will have none of that. But what the fuck is happening? But back to 40k. Hearing about these cool green fellas might have you asking, well, how can I become a Salamander? Well, first off, you shouldn't want to become a Space Marine. It's literally torture and you become a freakish weirdo. But second off, being a Space Marine is actually pretty cool. So maybe you do want to become them because you got sick-ass armor and Monsters. the incredible strength to yeah. cope with the loss of almost all your brothers and maybe your dad after your, your cousins brutally betray you and and then you get to witness everything you've ever fought for rapidly crumbling before your eyes for the next 10,000 years. Oh, I read that wrong. I mean, you get the incredible strength to bonk your foes with a giant mastercrafted thunder yeah. for the Emperor, am I right, ah. boys? Each Space Marine chapter has a slightly different initiate process and trials along with the standard Space Marine surgical operations. And the Salamander trial is actually quite cool as it's modeled on Vulcan's life and upbringing. First, they work as an apprentice for a Salamander, learning smithing and other valuable life skills. <laughs> then, if war, they're taking Prometheus to get the Astartes procedures done on him. After the operations, the new Space Marine scouts perform the trials that the Emperor and Vulcan did when they first met. All of this culminates in them being sent to hunt a giant, fire-breathing Salamander for which the chapter was named. Oh, Once so cool. completed, the scout can become a full-fledged Marine. In the current setting, the Salamanders are fulfilling their normal Space Marine duties of crusading and protecting humanity. Notably, they showed up at Hell's Reach, they were in the Badab War, and they participated in the Indominus Crusade. Along with that, the Wait, they were at Hell. I watched the Hell's Reach movie. Was that? Fuck, I can't. Ah! No, wait, yeah, that was the. Yeah, the Salamanders did. Wait. No? I can't remember. Salamanders are also on a mega scavenger hunt for the artifacts of Vulcan. These are nine epic artifacts forged by Vulcan himself and were scattered across the galaxy. It's said that once all nine artifacts are collected, the Vulcan will return to lead his chapter once more. Clues to their whereabouts Please. have been teased in the Tome of Fire, and the Salamanders gotta catch them all. Damn, that is the second Pokemon reference in this video. Um, instead of that, let's just say, much like Funko Pops, the Salamanders need to collect every last one of them. And, uh, that just made me think. The Salamanders have to collect a bunch of legendary weapons and artifacts in order to bring back a powerful leader and bring a whole new era to the faction. Call me a heretic, but that sounds a lot like the Eldar Crone Swords to me. Perhaps, Eldar, we are not too different after all. Come here and give me a hug, elf man. Real shit? Nah, JK LMAO. Eat flamer, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Oh man. Salamander. Or you could also look at it from their dragon influence, right? A dragon collecting a treasure hoard. Okay. Eh? This dragon iconography isn't just for show. These green marines are well known for their use of flamers, melts, and other fiery weapons. Their I preferred am. tactic is to use heavy armor so they could get close to the enemy and flamethrow them into the shadow realm. The Salamander's you resilience and flame weapons make for a devastating combo in close quarters. And even though they're some of the nicer dudes in 40k, that's only if they like you. If not, well, they're yeah. some of the most ferocious marines out there. Their Primarch Vulcan was said to have fury that surpasses even Lehman Russ, a true dragon on the battlefield, if you will. Outside of combat, the Salamanders are expert blacksmiths. They create and maintain all of their gear, a lot of which is mastercrafted works of art. They also have Hell large yeah. forge ships that manufacture weapons for the Salamanders on the go. How convenient. 
Another cool thing about the Salamanders is that, unlike most chapters, the Salamanders' fortress monastery is on the moon of their home planet, and is only really supposed to house the first company. The rest of the Salamanders live on Nocturne when they're not at war. This means that they actually hang out with the people of Nocturne and they could keep in touch with their families when not crusading. Along with their culture, Salamanders also have some interesting abilities and quirks from their unique gene scene. The most obvious and iconic one is the jet black skin and glowing red eyes. This unique appearance hey. results from a flaw in their otherwise stable gene seed. Their gene seed results in a defect with the Space Marine's melanochrome organ. This organ usually allows Space Marines to alter their melanin content on the fly in order to respond to various UV levels accordingly. However, due to the defective melanochrome organ, when a salamander goes to their home planet of Nocturne, the organ goes into super crazy overdrive mode and their skin turns permanently coal black and their eyes are burning red. These huh. mutations make them look particularly intimidating on the field as the hulking giants stomp the battlefield with eyes burning through the fogs of war, scaring some opponents in some... Honestly, that is such cool imagery. That's, that's just another reason why they're the best. ...mission even before the battle begins. Speaking of eyes, salamanders also have infrared vision just like the predator. This is called the fire sight and is obviously a useful ability as it would grant improved visibility in certain scenarios. One thing the salamanders use this for is to put cool designs in their armor that emits heat that only the salamanders can really see. Another more practical application is seeing through smoke, kind of like the thing that fire tends to make. And fire being the thing that salamanders tend to make. Oh hey, that's a kick-ass combo if you ask me. It should be noted that, theoretically, the IR vision would be worse with thick black smoke that oil fires would typically make. But also, flamers are said to burn super duper hot, so technically they shouldn't really produce smoke until the fire itself is dying out. But, also, I just spent like an hour reading about smoke physics and never really got a clear answer. So, I'm kind of losing my mind. So let's just say Fair that enough. the 40k rule of cool makes whatever we need to work work, and uh, we yeah, don't think too hard about it. I'm a fan it. of rule. So cool. with that in mind, let's just imagine for a second how scary it would be for these imagine. giants to stomp into the battlefield, spew fire everywhere, burning everything around them. You can't see anything through the smoke other than their piercing red eyes closing in on you, crushing anything in their way. Yeah, salamanders are the best. Sucks to be a heretic, you scumbag. Damn straight. More perks of being a salamander is that they're physically bigger than the average marine. They have high bigger, ah, better, high tolerances to extreme heat and radiation, and they have an above average regeneration ability. And I wonder if that regeneration thing was written because in real life salamanders can regenerate parts of themselves, or if it was just a generic durability thing. But the salamander gene seed isn't all sun flares and flamers. There are a few flaws in it. Along no. with the aforementioned defective melanochrome organ, salamanders also apparently have slower reflex times. Nothing super noticeable, and they're still superhumanly fast, but it is notably slower than other Astartes. Another weakness you could say if you're a dickhead, cough, perturabo, cough, curse, cough, almost every 40k character, is that the salamanders have an affinity for a strange concept known as basic empathy, and they try to defend <laughs> mankind at any cost. It's hinted at, but it's still unclear if this strange quirk is connected to their gene seed or not. But that final point is why I believe the Salamanders to be the perfect Marine. I have always subscribed to the perspective yeah. that the Emperor valued humanity above all else, and the insane lengths he went to were always in the interest of protecting humanity and guiding them to- Well, I disagree on this part. I think the Emperor was a bit of a fucking dick. Prosperity. Even though he was very flawed and made some seemingly nonsensical decisions to further his goals, the Emperor saw humanity as number one. He's literally me. Even something as innocuous as the Imperium skull motif furthers this idea. The human form in itself is beautiful and pure, even in its decayed state. The Emperor yeah. created his transhumans kind of in order to lead humanity to the rightful dominion of the galaxy. The Thunder Warriors, the Marines, the Custodes, and even the Primarchs. Actually, especially the Primarchs, were just tools, means to achieve his ultimate goal. So, with that in mind, the Salamanders fully embody the purpose of the Astartes. They are stalwart defenders of humanity to the umpth degree. Murderface McGee might be a more deadly soldier, but if he doesn't care if he kills every single human in order to quote-unquote save a city, he's missing his true purpose. Salamanders, on the other hand, they will do anything necessary to save humanity almost to a fault. In addition, they don't look down on humanity, nor do they condemn them. Much like how Vulcan respects his sons and views himself as a protector and teacher rather than a superior, the salamanders respect base humankind. 
And I better not see the stupid argument that this means the salamanders aren't grim dark and the setting is dead. The salamanders are literally dark because of their gene seed flaw. Pay attention! <laughs> uh, but joking aside, the salamanders might care about humanity, but they're still ultra-violent and murderous to anything that Man, makes I love humanity. Man, I love Damn right, I'm a MILF. <laughs> Having characters do heroic things doesn't mean that they're morally pure, nor does it mean that the setting as a whole isn't grim dark. There needs to be light to accentuate the darkness, so having a faction like the Salamanders perform noble actions yes. while constantly taking heavy losses to hopelessly protect a doomed empire is a whole lot darker to me than asshole murder acts, angrily killing jerk face ass hammer, and then stomping a baby. If every single character is an angry jerk, then that isn't a grim setting. It just means that the norm for the setting is that everybody's a jerk. But yeah, that's the salamanders. I love fucking facts. Yes, crack duck. These dudes, and they hit all of my check marks for the best space brain chapter. I love characters and fictions that constantly get their ass kicked, but they stay determined and they stick to their values no matter what. Also, dragons are badass. What Damn can I right. say? So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I look forward to doing some I didn't just enjoy this episode. I love more it. videos on different chapters, so stay tuned for that. And uh, comment below some cool salamander moments or just what your favorite chapter is. Thank you for watching. And that was Salamanders, the perfect space arena. Warhammer 40k facts. Okay, true. There's never been a more true video on the internet than this one. I have nothing else to say here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.